Hello everyone, and welcome back to DMG. Multi-slot GPUs that block one, two, even sometimes three slots below them are a fact of life nowadays. Gone are the one or two slot high-end workstation and gaming GPUs. In other words, I install this GPU here, and boom, I've lost the slot below it. So, is it just gone forever? Well, not if you use the subject of today's video. Pretty much, I paid for all the slots, so I'm gonna use all the slots. The device I've got here may just look like a regular riser cable at first glance, but you take a closer look at what actually plugs into your system, and think again. This is a very small USB port on a little PCIe 1X slot. But look at it again. It's at an angle. It's flat. And there's not a USB controller, so no, this is not a USB card. It just uses the USB cable for data. That goes somewhere else in your case and connects to this. Another PCIe slot. Now the actual connector is PCIe 4X, so it can fit more cards, so it has wider compatibility with different things like, for example, NVMe cards, which this is well suited to. However, it will only run at 1x because that is what this is. The idea is, this plugs in, in the used slot below your graphics card, you run this USB cable out to somewhere else, and you've got that slot back. And truly, it could be a great solution if it works and it's reliable. So today we are going to be testing both of those things. The SATA connector here is for power, because from my understanding, this cable is only data. It carries no power. Now the best application for this that I can think of would be an NVMe card. You could also use, for example, a SATA controller card, or if you got really creative, a Wi-Fi card, if you wanted to stick it somewhere else in the case. The only issues are, really the only limitations, is that it has to be close enough to a SATA power connector. That's easier in modern computers with bottom-mounted power supplies, but with a top-mounted power supply, you have to run a SATA cable pretty far. And, because it's not going in a slot by the outside of the case, you don't get access to, you know, external connectivity. So even if it does work, something like this 1X graphics card wouldn't be a good solution because you would have to run the display cables back outside your system, which would just be messy. Plus, why put in a 1x graphics card if the whole point of this is to get around the size of a graphics card. TLDR is, it helps you get a slot back from your graphics card that is covered up. It's best suited to NVMe cards, SATA controller cards, that kind of thing. And today we will be testing it to see if it's a practical solution. Alright, let's get over to the bench PC and see how it's going. Our first test will be, does it interfere with anything below it? So, if I install it here, it still clears this lower slot. Uh, it's pretty hard to see on camera because the lighting's bad, but there's a solid couple millimeters between this and the GPU, so there shouldn't be an issue there. Alright, there it is plugged in. Here's our cable. Here's the other side of it. I'll just stuff some cables back there to prop it up so that it doesn't touch the case and short out. But I think we're good here. Let's power it on, see if it works. I apologize for the flicker on the monitor. Uh, that is not showing up for me, but it's working. It's definitely working. So we'll see if our NVMe is accessible from within Windows. Oh, the light's flashing. Yeah, so there's read and write activity on the drive. So it appears to be reading from the drive, which is fantastic. 
which means it's connected and it's all working well. So theoretically it's working exactly as an NVMe should. I'm going to test if there are any slowdowns from just putting it in the NVMe slot right on the board. Alright, on to our NVMe. From my other computer I put some files on. I actually took this one out of my workstation. This is my uh, one of my NVMEs in my workstation that I took out in this adapter to test out and it looks like all of our files are there so that's good. Now I'm gonna open Crystal Disk Mark, benchmark it in this adapter and then just benchmark it on the motherboard. First I'm gonna full format the drive though. Okay I just wanna say really quickly Although running Crystal Disk Mark is probably not something all of you do on a very regular basis, so it's not a very uh, like regular workload, the SATA power connector and USB cable are extremely hot. So uh, that's just something to be aware of. Hotter than the NVMe itself, actually. I'm going to go grab a screwdriver, take it out of this adapter, and just plop it straight in the motherboard and see how it performs. Yeah, wow, this whole thing is just very hot. Our NVMe is back in our case. You can probably see. I don't recommend leaving them hanging like this for a long period of time, but just for a quick test, as long as I don't, you know, take it out, it'll be absolutely fine. And we've posted. So I'll get to the tests. By the way, I'm running Crystal Disk Mark with the NVMe optimized profile selected for the tests to hopefully give us the best results for our NVMe SSDs. Well, we've got some juicy test data for you here. On the left is the scores from the NVMe on the riser cable. On the right is from NVMe in the motherboard. So we can see there is an absolutely massive performance overhead of almost five times. So in just this first sequential test, we're getting about a fifth of the performance on the riser. On the motherboard, we're getting barely more performance than on the riser in random. In this random test though, the motherboard still doubles the riser performance and just about triples it in this sequential test. And similar remains for writing. Now this is a Gen 3 drive. The riser was in a Gen 3 slot and the motherboard slot for NVMe is Gen 3. So the only bottleneck is the riser itself. And I could see how sending all of your PCIe signals down a USB cable is decreasing performance. Now let's remember that this is a 4x NVMe and the actual connectivity of the riser is 1x PCIe. So yeah, you're getting a quarter of the possible bandwidth leading to these huge slowdowns. So I actually wouldn't recommend this for NVMe, especially with newer Gen 4, Gen 5, Gen 6 drives that can do double digits of gigabytes per second without breaking a sweat I definitely don't recommend this riser. I want to keep this video pretty short and just to the point, so I am going to wrap it up here. My final conclusion is, it does serve its purpose, and it gives you a slot back that you otherwise would have lost from installing a GPU. However, the performance overhead, in my opinion, is too great to be used for an NVMe drive. That's it for this video. Thank you everyone for watching. Consider subscribing if you're new to the channel. Only about 20% of my viewers are actually subscribed, so just make sure really quickly. Do me a favor. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Next Friday, I will be testing this riser with a GPU, so if you're interested, stay tuned for that video. That's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.